Shabbat Shalom, everybody. This is uh, Rabbi Stephen, Rob Shmuel here with you uh, with this week's 10 Minute Torah. First of all, big shout out. Thank you, Lila, for helping out and leading Friday night services. You, you know, it's so wonderful when we have our young adults who uh, are being or have been through the B'nai Mitzvot and they're able to take an active lead in, in our synagogue. And it's just, you know, Lador Vador, generation to generation. It's awesome. Um, I'm working with uh, four young adults who are approaching their B'nai Mitzvot this year, and it's a pleasure to work with them. They're doing so well. They're all dedicated. Um, Salif and Yusuf, under the guidance of their parents, Yafa and Brian, have put out some videos on YouTube, and I would suggest you all take a look at it. We'll get you the, uh, the YouTube address. But the, but the videos are so well done, so professional. The last one was about the Holocaust and, uh, you know, for the UN Holocaust Remembrance Day. And it was just a wonderful, wonderful job. You know, so proud of all of them, all of the kids that are, that are working so hard. So uh, a couple of other uh, words of note. Um, we have uh, some things coming up now. This past weekend, Super Bowl weekend, was supposed to be, or it was, the worldwide rap. Now, some of you may remember that as, you know, the one day of the year when the, the Federation of Jewish Men's Club sponsors the day when everybody gets together, all the men and girls too. Why not, right? Women right there. I always say to people when they say women are not supposed to put on to fill, and I hold up a copy of the Chumash and I say, show me where. Show me where it says that, right? It's a tradition. Uh, these days, we have a more egalitarian uh, climate and uh, Girls can certainly put on to fill in. In fact, um, instead of doing it, since we're going to miss it, since some of us are going to be away and uh, there's not going to be any class anyway, uh, what I am planning to do is have our B'nai Mitzvah students wrap to fill in uh, on March 12th. Now, March 12th, we're going to have sort of a workshop, a Purim workshop. Purim is Wednesday evening, March 17th, and uh, 98 percent chance that it will be uh, on Zoom rather than live, and that way you can all get into your costumes. You can do a little drinking if you want, not have to worry about driving. But I think that's probably the best way to handle this. So in advance of that, we're going to have, and we'd like the kids as many do, that want to come. We'd like to have all the kids here, and uh, Miss Zoe is going to help them make groggers and masks, and it's going to be a lot of fun. And in between that, I'd like to show the kids how to wrap to fill in, uh, which is commanded by the Shema. And, you know, when somebody gets bar mitzvah or bat mitzvah, then that's what they're shown. So we'll do that. Finally, one last note, March 4th is uh, Shabbat Across America. That will also be done online via Zoom. It involves a meal. And rather than do it here, and, uh, you know, some people still are, are, are working with the COVID, even though the mask mandate in California is pretty much over this weekend. Um, we will probably have it done at home, have your own plan, your own Shabbat meal. We'll start the cameras maybe at 6.30. We'll do some singing, have you eat. And then afterwards, we'll do a short service and, and we'll do some learning. It's basically for learning. So we'll, we'll go ahead and do that too. Okay, enough talk. Let's get to this week's portion, which is real fascinating. And I'm very excited about this week's portion because you know, I read the Chumash over and over again. <clears throat> somebody suggested, somebody asked me, well, now that we've been through the Torah once, you can, are you going to continue, Rabbi, doing your Torah study? I said, absolutely. Because when people get involved, when people do Torah study year after year, each year, they are themselves at a deeper level of understanding. Like the level, like my mentor said, like it's Torah is like levels, layers of an onion. And each year you're learning more as you get more used to Torah, you get more learned, you see different things. So, Ki Titsa, this is the golden cow. Now, uh, I am doing a different type of Devar Torah at the Saturday morning service. And we're orienting it more, not necessarily toward a recap of what happened, but something that we can take away, a learning. And I love that idea. What I've been doing is saying, okay, if this is the triennial year, you know, we're using the triennial year cycle, let's do a drosh or a learning from that particular portion of the Parsha. This week, it's a little different because this week is the golden calf, which is actually 
not part of the triennial reading cycle this year. This triennial year, uh, cycle this year actually involves, you know, Moses going back up after the, uh, the, the fiasco, you know, of the golden calf. And he wanted, and he's going back up Mount Sinai to get another set of Ten Commandments. And he asks God, you know, to forgive the people. God says, well, I'm going to make you a great nation. Moses says, no. Then everybody's going to say, look, you know, look what this guy did. He brought him out in the wilderness to, um, you know, to die, to kill them. And isn't it great? When somebody confronts Hashem to do the right thing, God loves that because if it's done from righteousness, it lifts people up. So what happens with the golden calf? Okay, so remember, the Midrash, the sages understand that this was really instigated by the Erev Ra, the rabble, the Egyptian rabble that used the confusion of the Exodus to leave Egypt. These were criminals, poor people. Wanted, yeah, Some of them were not the nicest people. Let's put it that way. So <clears throat> Moses is gone 40 days and 40 nights, but they're saying, where's Moses? Why isn't he back here? And some sages say, well, they miscounted. They, You know, the one day of travel was not part of the 40 days he was going to be up there. So they miscounted. It was actually only 39 days instead of 40. They're having a fit. They're like, where's Moses? Who's going to guide us through the desert? We need a God. And Aaron, you know, seeing the potential for destruction, says, well, here's who's going to lead you. He never really said he's creating an idol or God. He says, this is what's going to lead you out of the wilderness. And once they make the golden calf, he said, Aaron says, tomorrow will be a festival for Hashem. And he said, Hashem, for God. He didn't say for this God, for this calf. He said for God, understanding that he's trying to buy time so people don't get irate and, because there was some violence. Moses is up on the mountain and God says, you need to go down there and you need to, you need to see what these people are doing. And God's, and he go and, and Moses goes down, he has the stone tablets, breaks them in a, in, in, because he's irate with these people. And these people, the instigators are put to the sword by the Levites. Now here's the question that we've been asking. The 10 commandments contain the second commandment you shall have no gods before me. Do not make a any type of likeness in my image. Second commandment. People hadn't gotten it yet. And we always look back at about three or four weeks ago, three or four portions ago. It started with Jethro. What happens? Jethro shows up, you know, says, wow, I, I heard about the Exodus. You know, yes, you're Hashem. This God that you worship is the true God, you know, People say that Jethro had been an idol worshiper himself, and now he's kind of seeing the light. Then Moses goes up the mountain, gets the Ten Commandments, comes down, gives the Ten Commandments. Next portion, Mishpatim, we have some various other sundry, not, not necessarily sundry, but some very important commandments about property ownership, starting with respect for a uh, slave that is an indentured servant who's working off a debt or working off a off payment of a crime. You know, what happens if your neighbor's cow comes into your land and starts eating your own your grass? You know, it, it's it's um, remedial, remedial, remedies, legal remedies for, I guess it's called torts, you know, when you have this, uh, this, this civic um, issues, you know, people invading, you know, your space. Then we had the building of the Mishkan, you know, all the instructions for that. Then we had what the priests and the high priests, and the high priests and the priests are going to wear. And then we have the various furniture that's going to be made and the menorah and the labor. And now all of a sudden, Moses is coming down, which tells us that, yes, the Torah is not in chronological order, at least not from human perspective. God has a being ineffable, being outside of space and time, unknowable. God has a different perspective of time. There's no linear with God. As, think of it as, you know, for you science fiction fans, think of it as being fourth dimensional. So God says, to, so we, is this a flashback, flash forward? The point is, this is right after the giving of the Ten Commandments, okay? And we can discuss the order some other time. But right now, why were the people punished if they hadn't yet got the second command, the commandments and the second one? Yet? God says to Moses, the people whom I've commanded, team, the commandments I've given them, what commandments were those? Remember, Abraham and Hashem, made a covenant. That covenant was the covenant of the parts. It was also 
the circumcision, the Brit Milah, that established a relationship, a covenant between the Hebrew people, they were Hebrews back then, and Hashem, and Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and now we've got the 12 sons, and now we've got the Israelites, all the tribes, the, son, the sons and daughters of Jacob, who was Israel, you know, and what other commandments did we get? We got the commandment for Pesach while the people were still in Egypt before, you know, during the 10th plague, before they left. So we had been giving commandments. We had been had that relationship with Hashem. It's kind of like, you know, it's the beginning of a relationship. And now what are all these commandments? Now it's kind of, okay, we're going to spell it out for you. We're going to make it a little bit easier for you to study. See, and that was the whole point of the Ten Commandments and the other six hundred and three that are following and will follow. So, did the Israelites break the covenant? Yes, they did. Did they break the second commandment? Eh, maybe not, but they definitely broke the covenant by going and thinking, "Oh, this one God that we can't see or hear, you know, it's gone, and Moses is gone. So, what do we have? We need something physical." That's the way humans are, folks. We all—it's the way we are. We need something that we can see, hear, touch, and feel. So that's why it's so difficult for people to perceive and work with Hashem. Okay, see you next week. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you for listening, and we will talk to you soon.